All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm here in Inverness, Florida at 44 Tackle. Got my buddy, Chris, over here. You probably saw Chris and I fishing um, uh, on Sweetwater. We did a few episodes down like here. Henderson, Henderson and Panasofki. And Chris, this guy is, is a really big stick here in this area. And so I figured since we're it's down here, bad. yeah, <laughs> since we're down here, uh, I think I want you to kind of walk us through what is working down here in the central floor area. So kind of like Harris chain all the way down over to like Lake Rousseau and everything okay. in between. Yeah. So the, the, as it gets hotter, you know, fish will start going deeper and in Florida, we don't have a lot of deep water. So deep water to us is like eight to 12 foot a lot of times. And they'll cling to brush and structure and shell bars and really try to chase the bait. And so one thing to, that has come out this year is the SMH worm. That's yeah. going to be great this year for dragging shell bars and brush and things like that. Um, this head on this SMH jig head is a little bit different. It doesn't really stand the worm straight up, but it's going to make it crawl through a lot of that structure a lot better. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that like I immediately, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you can. Um, the SMH worms does or the jig head is really cool because it's just slightly different it's just different enough to like to fit in a whole different set of conditions like yep. traditional like shaky heads are usually like ball shaped or something like that that are yep. designed to have the bait sticking straight up but since elastec is forcing the smh worms to stick straight up anyways just naturally the jig head didn't need to have that ball style head right. so what they did is they made kind of a uh, egg shape design and so that egg shape there allows this to really be a good jig head for dragging on hard spots like yeah, you said when you drag rough rough ground it's going to have a wobble to it too. right and it's just more streamlined and yep. also brush piles which yep. nowadays in florida when i lived here i never fished any brush piles but nowadays that's kind of a big deal yeah it's it's turned into a big deal around here um, the other thing is, you know, in the shallower lakes, uh, we really like to use a lot of vibrating tail worms. So yeah. the turbo fatties make a really good addition yeah. uh, this time of year. So it's always good to, you know, try to find fish with a moving bait. Um, my favorite probably is always going to be like the June bug um, for early mornings. Watermelon red is a good go-to no matter where you are in Florida. When there's only one on the shelf, you know that that is going to be a good color. But, um, you know, uh, you know, also I've been using these as trailers as well on a swim jig. Oh yeah. So yeah. cutting them down and, and using that tail action on a swim yeah. jig has been really good too. And if you guys didn't know, uh, I held last year, I think it was last iCast, this, we introduced this Z-Man, um, a lot allowed me to help them build the perfect swimming worm. And I think we achieved that with the turbo fatties. Uh, overall, I think it's a really, really good swimming worm. Um, but a lot of people have been doing pretty well here in Florida with them. Yeah, it's been a really good worm for us. Um, you know, that we're, we're king of a vibrating tail worm right. uh, down here in Florida. So, you know, we move a lot of those. And the profile on that was perfect. You know, right. it's right in between a big and a small, uh, typically a zoom speed worm. Uh, is the the lure of choice down here but that i really like the action of it because it's it's got a bigger fatter profile yeah but it's not super long and it just feels like it's really good for finding different opportunities to, yeah. to display that bait. let me let me show them that real quick too. you might have to take it out of the pack because i can't i can't do it one-handed not that good so what he's talking about is like the the thickness of this bait is is like you know you would expect with like the bigger like speed worms but it's also the same length as like a just a traditional size one but the reason why we did that is number one we wanted to ha pack this with with salt to make it really really heavy on the cast and also just be compact enough to where um you know this elastic material wouldn't stretch and create a lot of of drag on the cast which it, so it just casts like a bullet right yeah, and that it, tail action. I mean, I, I rig it multiple ways. I mean, if if you watch on that Sweetwater episode, one of the ways was I was rigging it on top, and I actually just slow roll it on the surface, and this tail's got really really good action kicking that water, um, and so shallow canals and and search, use it as a search bait even, right? Um, to just throw it over pads, over whatever you want on a weedless EWG yeah. hook, and also the good thing about this worm too 
is it, while it does have salt, it still floats. It'll float an EWG hook if you want it to, right. if you don't have a weight on it. Um, typically, when I'm running it on the surface like that, I'll just run an EWG and just slow roll it. And then if a fish comes to like, you know, you'll see the head wake, um, you can kill it and it'll stop it right in the strike zone. Yeah. Um, now, if they, if they don't eat it, then that's when I'll start adding a weight so that it has that deadfall. Right. But most of the time, if you if you pause it, they'll eat it. Do you, what size weight do you like on that for the most I personally part? like to go with um, usually an eighth ounce Okay. Uh, when I'm, I'm reeling it like that, if I'm moving a lot. But if I'm dragging it, uh, on, like on the Harris chain or anywhere with Panasofsky, uh, it's usually a three-eighths. Three-eighths. I, we, and, and I don't peg it if I drag it. No, when we were designing this, the one like key thing that I wanted to accomplish with it is on the pause, because a lot of times I'm fishing this on like Okeechobee or you know, a Kissimmee chain or something like that and swimming it through the grass, like emergent yeah. grass, Kissimmee grass and pads and stuff. I, on the pause, I wanted it to flutter, have perfect tail action on a 3 16th ounce weight because 3 16th is, or a quarter, something in that range. That's yep. about what I usually use. A lot of times at eighth ounce, like you said, if I just want it on the surface, yep. it, more of a buzzer, but. The other thing you can do is put it on a chin lock hook. Right. And then that way when it falls, it's a straight fall. Right, yeah. Um, and it stays parallel with the bottom end. Yeah, the chin locks is a, is a um, it's kind of a, a pre-made weight and EWG hook um, you know, kind of swim bait hook yep. design that, that also has a little bit of a molded, uh, lead on the shaft of the, the, uh, of the EWG. So, so the other thing, uh, you know, never, never take the time to pass up the bang sticks. Um, this is my, my go-to when I'm flipping, you know, pads, Kissimmee grass. Um, I'll take a half ounce weight and half ounce to three quarter, depending on how thick the the uh, vegetation is mm -hmm. um, and I, I have had a lot of confidence with that right now California craw is always good around our area and once again and you know black blue laminates another good June one bug. Um, this is I mean last year top 10 at Okeechobee on the bank sticks well actually it was the goat the first day and then the bank sticks this this is I think the bank sticks is has quickly become like one of the best um, uh, you know, Florida baits, like the most popular, like flipping Florida yeah. straight tail worm style deal. And it was originally designed just as a Nico rig bait, but it's, it's really good around the spawn too. When right. you're trying to stick it to the bottom and you're just kind of shaking it yeah. when you're not moving around a bunch, they, they tend to really like that. And it's got, it's got such a, it, this has much less salt content than the uh like the turbo fatties or like a mag fatties or something like that so it sticks straight up off the bottom it was designed that way <clears throat> what else is going on so the uh for flipping heavy cover and stuff like that i like to go with um you know smaller if you're going with a smaller profile the baby goat's really good you know i've heard um, a lot of guys like punching with that, the baby goat you know cold fronts around here and stuff like that in florida it's a really good deal um, when you would use like a cricket style bait right. or something real tiny with not a lot of action, um, you're just trying to stick it to the top of the mat kind of thing. Right. Um, you know, and then also, you know, the billy goat, uh, I, I love running that like a top water bus mm -hmm. bait trailer. Um, and night tournaments and stuff like that, that's usually my bus bait trailer. Right. Um, and then the helicross have been really good, uh, you know, really good jig trailer. You know, yeah. Right, right around the bluegill spawn that we just had this has been a really good deal yeah um that's like just a classic florida color for right. the jig trailer um you know black and blue is always good uh swim jig trailer um, i also like a california craw a lot in florida I, California craw. yeah i honestly Everything love that right. color if it's like a clear it's you know slightly tannic stained water that's a lot of tannic water right yeah there. you do so what about hard baits? Is there, are there any like hard baits that are? So, the, you have the Whopper Plopper, Berkeley Chopper style, uh, top waters are always good. Um, Those have been working out here? You can't go wrong with the Devil's oh, Horse. Oh, yeah. everybody knows about the Devil's Horse. What's your favorite color here? That one right there. Which one? Uh, so the, silver, black back, and an orange, orange belly? belly? Yep. That's yeah, silver. I used to use the, the blue silver um one's quite a bit but 
yeah, that that does look good. It looks Florida like. The uh, you know it's hard to beat a Whopper Cropper or Chapo. What color do you like here in Florida? I always like. It always seemed like I was always partial to the shiny ones, either gold or or chrome sided. I've done best with actually, believe it or not, perch. Perch, um, huh? No, nah, I, I believe it. Um, so usually the smaller perch one. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to pass up just phantom shad, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, when they're on a shad bite. Um, I don't really go crazy with my Whopper Popper selection though. It's usually yeah. if it's clean water, um, or they're on a shad bite, I'll go white or uh, phantom shad. And then, uh, I really like that, that perch though, most of the time. So I hate to admit it, but I'm not very good. I haven't caught, I can probably count on two hands how many fish I've caught on a plopper style bait i just i got i was kind of late to this whole deal in florida it's more of like an off the bank kind of deal mm. where everywhere else like when there's no grass involved you right throw it everywhere here I, I usually go right around like you know docks and things like that where it's right. going to be a little bit less vegetation sometimes um and i'll run it over submerged grass yeah well there's always it's, it seems like there's always like yeah that line in between the dock and the kissimmee grass and then you've got usually got like an open spot right underneath those docks, like yep. especially at the Harris chain where where the the eelgrass underneath, there's usually like a big carpet of eelgrass, yep. like ends because it's not getting light penetration. Yep. I heard about a lot of guys fishing the pro circuit this year. I wish I got on that bite. I wish I got on any good bite at the Harris chain this year, but uh, they were throwing like whopper ploppers and buzz baits around docks and stuff. Uh, uh, what what kind of line do you use? So for line, um, it just depends. So like on a whopper plopper, I'd use like here I use thirty pound braid. Okay. Um, and actually, out of state, I'd use thirty pound. Heard braid. a lot of guys so, throwing braid. That's what I personally throw. Yeah, I just any kind of top water, I always throw braid just because like if you mess up and on a cast, yeah, it's a lot easier to get that lure right back out of there. Right. You can hang a branch or whatever it is. That way, you can have an opportunity to get another shot at that fish rather than you know shaking a right, right, with, yeah. with mono. Um, yeah hollow body frogs are you know always in season you know, like the, the leaf frogs. frogs yes i love those little guys yeah, i like the smaller profile one myself yeah um, that's the cool thing about the leaf frogs is they come in the 2.75 yeah, and the two and a quarter and, sizes and the, poppin', yeah. so, and the poppin style that's more of my springtime it's probably the easiest frog out there to walk it is and it's got a really it's got one of the more aggressive keels uh, that I've seen on, on a frog it you know it looks pretty normal from the top but you look at the side it's got a pretty aggressive keel pretty pretty deep which helps in the walking yep yeah for sure I heard you talking about frogs yep you know that guy yeah this is this everybody is this is Bill <laughs> I got him to to pick up some some Z-Man stuff there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been visiting. Told me to look you up. All right, so I know you have one other bait that I don't think I've ever used before. Really? <laughs> Bill, come on over here. I'll sell you some jackhammers. <laughs> here in Florida, you know, Golden Shiner, huge yeah. forage for us. That's that's one of my go-tos. Are the shad pretty active this time of year out here? Not the, not like they are during the spawn. Um, you'll get like certain times in the morning. Sometimes you'll see a little spawn go on, but right, it's really not. Do you see a lot of the small like newborn shad? Because I know on like we don't get a lot of that around really? here. You'll get it up in the pads, and that's what'll produce a good frog bite a lot of times. Really? Because um, it'll be loaded with bait around the pad lines and the yeah. vegetation but not not out the offshore stuff like you and i did it, it yeah the same thing i i love that one i mean just because it's you know not that i don't know if it necessarily has to 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 represent a golden shiner but it's bass down here color. just love gold you know yeah. gold shiny gold they they love it so that's a good all-around color similar yeah bait fish there is. i know i i love that one when i can't decide between bluegill and shad yeah like if i'm trying to I imitate both of them if i can't decide that's what i reach for i usually go either razor shad or uh diesel minnow. oh yeah um, for sure the clarity of the water for sure 
shallower I'll like the diesel minnow because it'll slow it down a little bit right um, that paddle tail actually yeah. slow it down you can creep it along the edges of like canals and usually and sea walls and I I decide like early season I use the diesel or the the razor shads more just because of like a lot of times I'm yo-yoing it yeah. you know and and I think it glides better with the razor shads yeah. the 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 uh, diesel minnows is like my favorite warm water one uh, but it it tends to like create a parachute action it kind of makes it go straight down as opposed yeah. to like you know anyways um well right on it sounds like there's a lot of things to do here in central florida right now as far as fishing goes yeah the you know shallow water bites really good this time of year mm -hmm. you can cover a lot of water and catch a lot of fish this time of year and and the flipping bite gets really, really good when it gets hot. Yeah. You, know, you get those, those are the heavy sun days and you can get a pitch for them a lot. Doesn't seem to change that much from spring to summer. It's always Florida. It always you're always catching them flipping or, the or covering way. water. Yeah, it's little exactly di little different types of water and how long in a day you'll commit to. Right, right. So. If you guys are coming down to Florida, try these different techniques that, that my buddy Chris just pointed out. Um, and if you're coming through the Inverness area, definitely come check out this shop. It is massive. He's got everything. So come over to 44 Tackle. But if you're not traveling through, you can always order it online at 44tackle.com. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm going to see you out on the water. Maybe you'll even see Chris. hope so. <laughs> see you guys.